Welcome to the engineering class for October the 27th. Uh, as I started to say right before I turned on the recording, uh, you guys are definitely going to want today's class recorded. We're going to be talking about some things that hopefully will make sense the first time through, but might not. Uh, you might need to come back and watch the recording a second time, or maybe even a third time, uh, in order to fully catch everything that we're going to do today. So definitely we're going to want to record it. Uh, okay, uh, so today is the last day that I intend to spend specifically in the software engineering uh, category. Uh, next time we meet, we're going to move into the electrical engineering category, which is closely related to software engineering. Uh, what we're going to do in the electrical engineering uh, section of the class is we're going to learn how to, how to build electrical devices. And many of those electrical devices that we build are, are going to be things that you connect up to an Arduino. So the Arduino will turn various things on and off at various times. And so in order to uh, do the projects right, you're going to have to know how to program an Arduino. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and so that's why they're so closely related. Uh, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn a few tricks that you can do if you get rid of the drag and drop and go in and, and tinker with the actual code. The, the drag and drop blocks that we've been using up until now are, are really wonderful at making simple things. But if you want to do a little bit more advanced work, there are things that just can't be done using the drag and drop software. Uh, so we're going to learn two things today uh, that we, we can start off maybe using the drag and drop and get most of our code written using the drag and drop. But there are two things that in order to do them the way that we're gonna learn about today, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to set the drag and drop aside and you're gonna have to go in and you're gonna have to look at the real code and you're going to have to tinker with the real code. Hopefully, it won't be too overwhelming. Uh, before I jump into that, are there any questions about anything at all? Or just go ahead and jump into the new stuff? OK, not seeing anything, not hearing anything. All right. So uh, today's assignment can be found if you go into Canvas. So let me share here. All right. so. We're going to go into Canvas. We're going to go into the engineering technology class. Hello. OK, we'll go into uh, assignments, which is you can also get into it by clicking on modules. Same thing. All right. So this is uh, the assignment for today. It's the last project for the software engineering module. Uh, it's an automated SOS sender. Uh, so if you click on here, and wait a little while. OK, there we go. So it shows you a circuit. This is what we're going to build. And then over here, it tells you what I want the circuit to do. Uh, so rather than just uh, telling you, how about if I show you what I want the thing to do? Uh, let's see. Let's go in with it. Yeah, let's go with this. one. OK, so this thing right here, hopefully you recognize that's an Arduino. So it's a a really nifty, super powerful, and yet easy to use little uh, uh, kind of a mini computer where, where, as you have found, you can program it so that it'll turn on these various pins uh, for a certain amount of time and then turn them off. And you can also use these pins to read in out input, or you can use it to put out output either way. All right, so uh, if you look, you'll see that what I've got right here is I've got a, a light that's connected up with this thing that's called a resistor. And now, since we haven't studied electrical engineering yet, it may not be obvious why we have the resistor. But the resistor does serve an important purpose. If this resistor wasn't here, what would happen is we would put so much electricity through the light that it can damage the light. Uh, so we want to protect the light by putting this resistor there so it kind of slows down the electricity so it doesn't overpower the light. 
Uh, and then we got this other thing over here. This is a buzzer. And as you as you have now played with, you know that it's possible to buzz this thing at different musical tones for different amounts of time. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to have you do in a few minutes, I'm gonna turn, turn you loose to, to work, but I want you to stay on Zoom while you're working so that we can talk and I can answer any questions you have. But the first thing that I'm gonna have you do is I'm going to have you build this circuit and I'll, uh, I'll step you through how to build it. Up until now, I've always given you the circuit that has already been pre-built and just had you program it. But uh, it's neat. You, you need to know how to build your own circuit. So I'll show you in just a second, okay? But uh, the important thing is I want you to see what the circuit does. So first off, let me tell you a little why I made the circuit. So let's suppose that you're out sailing in the ocean and something goes wrong, you, you know, maybe you hit something in the middle of the night uh, or what, but your boat is starting to sink. It's taking on water. Uh, so you got a problem. You need to see if you can stop the water from coming in. But at the same time, you also need to send out an SOS call because you might not be able to stop the water from coming in. So, so you want to get on the radio and you want to call for help but you can't do both at the same time. So what you need is you need an automated device that can send out a call for help all by itself. You just start it going and it just, it just sends out this call for help. And while it's doing that, then you can work to try and figure out where the water is coming from and see if you can stop it so that hopefully the boat won't sink. But just in case the boat does sink, you need that automated distress call to be sent out. So you guys know Morse code. What, there's a special Morse code symbol that you send out that means help. Anybody know what that uh, Morse code symbol is? Uh, SOS, right? Oh, SOS. Sorry. And and what is the Morse code pattern that corresponds to SOS? Dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. You got it. it? That's, okay. you, yeah, you got it exactly right. OK, so what we want this uh, circuit to do is we want it to send out SOS. But we do have to be careful that we don't accidentally activate this circuit because uh, the Coast Guard is very strict about people who send out false alarms over the radio. You know, if you're out on the radio and you send out an SOS call, or it also it's called a mayday call, if you send out a mayday call when it's not really an emergency, boy, does the Coast Guard ever get angry. And they could hit you with a really big fine because, because when that happens, you know, they send out all sorts of people and helicopters and ships and everybody rush, rushes out to help. And if it turns out to be a false alarm, uh, you know, that's, that's a big problem. And so they can hit you with a hefty fine if you call SOS when it's not really an SOS. So what we need to do with this circuit is we need to build in a little delay it's kind of like, you know, on your computer, when you, go to when you go to delete something and the computer asks, are you sure? Do you really want to delete this? And then you say, oh, no, I didn't really do. That was an accident. OK, same thing with this. So when we activate our automated SOS sender, we want it to give us a little bit of a countdown uh, so that if we, if we uh, activate it by accident, we have time to realize, oh, I didn't mean to do that. We have time to stop it before the XOS actually gets sent out. OK, so now with that background here, let me show you what I want you guys to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start Simulation. Uh, and you're going to hear some beeps. So I hope your speaker volume isn't turned up too loud. All right, so let's see what happens. So I'm going to activate the automated SOS. So it's Okay, so we hear five beeps. Now we hear four beeps. Now we hear three beeps. Now two beeps. Now one beep. Okay, now, there we go. There's the SOS. So dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. And then it just keeps on going. And it'll repeat again. Dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. Okay, so so this is what I want you guys to do. All right, I'll stop it there. All right, so you see that uh, that countdown period 
that was the period that's designed so that if I hit it accidentally, it gives me it gives me a little bit of warning so that I can realize that I've messed up and I can stop it before it actually sends out the the, uh, the SOS. Okay, so I want five beeps and then four beeps and then three beeps and then two beeps and then one beep. And then if I haven't stopped the thing by then, then it knows that it really is an emergency. It wasn't just an accidental activation. And so then it sends out the SOS. Okay, now I have programmed mine so that when it beeps, the light also comes on. Now, uh, I am not gonna require that you do that, um, but I, I, I am gonna require that the five beeps need to be sound beeps. And then once you go to the SOS, if you don't want to uh, do the beeper for the SOS, if you just wanna do the light only and just have the light flash the SOS pattern, um, I'm okay with that. And in fact, it might be a good idea because it'll keep things a little simpler. Because I'm hoping that you guys can finish this assignment before the class period ends today. And uh, so if we keep it simple, then that increases the odds that you will have it done before the class period ends. Okay, so how could we do this uh, using the drag and drop software. Well, actually, first off, tell you what, let's build it, okay? So what I want everybody to do is, right now, I want you to open up Tinkercad, and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna open up a brand new blank page in Tinkercad. So I'm gonna go back to here, and you guys do the same while you're waiting for me. All right, so I'm going to create a new circuit. And I want you guys to do the same. And it takes a few seconds. All right. So over on the right here, if you scroll down, you'll come to an Arduino. So you see that Arduino that I got right there? So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag over here. And so I've just pulled in a new Arduino. And if you click on the code, you'll see that it has a little bit of code already built in there. Well, what it what it does if we were to run this code, you, well, you can tell me it's gonna it's gonna set the built-in LED to high. Wait for one second, set it to low. Wait for one second. So, so when you drag in an Arduino, it automatically comes with that code. So, just for grins, let's run it and see what happens. So, I'm starting the simulation, and the built-in LED is this thing that you see right there. You see that? That that is the built-in LED, the, the the thing that's flashing right there. Now, I don't want to use the built-in LED because that built-in LED, it's so small, it's hard to see. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to bring in your own LED, All right? So I'm trusting you guys are with me at this point. Uh, in fact, tell you what, before I go on further, let's, uh, let's see, can you guys type into the chat box here? Uh, I want you to type in yes, if you have opened up Tinkercad and dragged in an Arduino. Okay, I'm seeing lots of yeses. Okay, good. All right, so now let's bring in an LED. Okay, so if you go up to the top, you see there's an LED right there. So click on that and drag over here and bring it up into here. Okay, now, I also want to bring in a resistor. I mean, if I wanted to, in theory, I could plug in the, LED, the uh, LED like that, but uh, it's too much electricity for the LED and it's gonna shorten its lifetime. So you see next to the LED on the right side, I've got a resistor. So let's click that and let's bring it in here. And did you notice how it was that when I bring the resistor in close to it, you see it snaps right in place there? Okay. Now. Resistors come in several different varieties. The default resistor is one kilo ohm. That's one, that's the same thing as 1000 ohms. And that's, now resistors is something that we're going to learn about starting next time we meet. So right now, if you say, I don't know what a resistor is, don't worry. It's, it's just something that slows down the electricity so that it won't burn out our LED. And you can change how much resistance it has. So one kilo ohm is the same thing as 1000 ohms. So that's too much. So I'm gonna change it from kilo ohm down to regular ohms. I want you guys to do the same thing. So you see how I did that? I clicked on here. So 
So now it's one ohm, but one ohm is not enough resistance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna change this by typing in. So 220 is what I want. Okay, so I brought in a resistor, I've hooked it up to the LED and I've changed it. So the value of the resistor is 220 ohms. Now I need to wire it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my cursor over. So did you see how when I hover over the lower end of the resistor, it lights up? So I'm gonna click there and now I've got a wire and I can connect this wire anywhere that I want. So I want to connect it up to pin 13. And when I click down there, okay, so bingo, it's done. And if I want, I can change the color of the wire too. Now that's not really important, but you know, interesting. Okay, now the other end of the LED needs to plug needs to be plugged into what we call the ground. So if I hover over here, click, so now I get this wire. And if I want, I can click here and I can have the wire be all bendy. Okay, uh, and then after I've done a couple bends, or I can just go right straight down here to ground. Okay, so you guys don't have to do the bends if you don't want. You can make it, if you want to just make it a nice straight wire from there down to there, that certainly works. And if you want to leave it as green, that's okay. Or if you want to change it to some other color, that's okay too. All right, so now watch what happens when we start the simulation. So there we go. Ah, you see how our LED is coming on right now? So it's coming on and off. So this built-in LED that's uh, in the Arduino, that built-in LED is wired up together with pin 13. So when you turn on pin 13, that also turns on the built-in LED in the Arduino. All right, so we have a, uh, an Arduino now that flashes on and off, which is Okay, but it's not what we want. We want something that flashes the SOS pattern. And before it flashes the SOS pattern, we also want to do this countdown beep. So let's stop the simulation here. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So we need a beeper. Where can we get the beeper? Well, if you come over to the right and you scroll down, you'll see down, yeah, there it is, down almost all the way to the bottom. There's this thing that says piezo which is just a fancy way of saying, that that's a fancy type of beeper. Later we'll learn what, a, what piezo means, but for right now, just, it's just a beeper. Okay, so drag on that and bring it in. Now, when you hover over these leads, you'll see one of them says positive and the other one says negative. So that's important, it's, it's like an LED. If you hook it up backwards, it won't work. Okay, so we're gonna pick some pin. I don't care what pin you pick. I'm going to pick pin seven, but you don't have to pick pin seven if you don't want. You can pick any other pin. And so I'm going to connect that pin to the positive side of my uh, buzzer. And then the negative side of the buzzer needs to be connected to ground. Now, I've already got something connected into the ground up here. Now, uh, with, with this software simulator, if I try to connect this to here, it will let me do it. So I could do this and, and it would work just fine. But if we ever finish with COVID and we ever get back into school, you'll find out that these pins can only hold one wire at a time. If you try to plug two wires into a pin, there's just not enough room, it won't work. So let's pretend that this is a real situation, not a software. So what I'm gonna do then is I need to plug it into another ground. And luckily, if you, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see that there is another pin down here. In fact, there's two other pins down here that are both labeled ground. So these two grounds down here, they are the same as the ground up there. So if I take my buzzer and if I connect a wire from here down to either one of these grounds, doesn't matter which one, okay, then that will work. Okay, so the electrical part of our project is now done. We now have a light <clears throat> that's protected by a resistor, so we don't overdrive it, and we have a buzzer. All right, so what I need you guys to do is type into the chat box saying, got it, once you have 
built the circuit to this point right here. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of got it's. Okay. All right, and Sophia, don't worry about it. That's okay. All right. Okay, so now it's time to start programming the code. All right, so remember what we want to do? We want to turn on the buzzer five times, you know, just five short buzzes, and then four times, and then three times, and then two times, and then one time. Okay. Now, there are a couple ways. In fact, there's more than a couple. There are a lot of ways we could do that. The one that's conceptually the simplest would be just to drag in the thing. In fact, let's let's open up the code here. Okay. So if we were to drag in this thing that says play speaker on pin whatever. In fact, let's open this up. And let's take this sample code. Let's get rid of it. We don't need the sample code. Okay, so so we're going to play the speaker on whatever pin we've got it into with, with a different tone for a certain amount of time. So I've got mine set up, so it's plugged into pin 7. So I'm going to have to make mine be pin 7. You guys make yours be whatever pin you wanted it to be. And I could do tone 60 or tone 50 or whatever, you know. Now, one second is going to be way too long. So I recommend let's do it for maybe just uh, a quarter of a second, maybe. So how about 0 0.25? OK. And now we're going to need to have a little bit of a weight in here. So let's click on Control and let's bring in a weight. But I don't want the weight to be very long either. But I do want the weight to be longer than this number here. So uh, let's make the weight be 0.5. I mean, you can play with these numbers here. OK, so what's going to happen is it's going to play the, the speaker on pin 7. Uh, it's going to do it for, for a quarter of a second, and it's going to wait for half a second. And so if we, if we do this now, let's see what happens. So let me turn on the sound. I've already got the sound on. OK, good. So let's see what happens. Okay, so, so I've got it beeping, but it's not doing what I want. It's not doing the countdown. So uh, what would you guys recommend we do in order to make it be a countdown? Somebody unmute yourself and tell me, what, what should we do to have a countdown? Uh, you put the repeat block and then you do five seconds or five times. Okay, I like that. Okay. So let's do the repeat block and let's put it in right there. And we're going to say repeat five times. OK, good. And then after it's done it five times, we're going to wait for we want to wait for just a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to what, what do we do to get it to do four times? So just we're going to put back, another repeat, put another four. repeat block in there. OK, but this time we want it to be four times. OK, and what do we put in there? Well, basically, this is what we want to put in there. Did you guys know that if you right click on this, you can duplicate it? That's kind of a nice thing. OK, so that way it makes it a lot easier. So so let's let's put in our repeat blocks. So we're going to repeat five and then four and then three. And then two. And then and then we don't have to do a repeat for once. OK, so let's duplicate this and stick it in there. Duplicate that. Oops, I didn't want to duplicate that. I want to duplicate everything. OK, why is it doing this to me now? OK, my, my thing's gotten in some weird mode here. Let me close it up and open it up again. Oh, I hate it when Tinkercad does this. OK, so let's drag that in. OK, I, I don't know if it does this. Use. Occasionally, Tinkercad does this. It locked up. So let me just refresh the page, and that'll fix the problem. OK, so you guys know what to do. So go ahead and get working on it. And uh, let's see. let's see who can get it to work 
the, the soonest here. Okay, so now it's working all right for me. Okay. All right, I got mine. You guys got yours? Yeah, I got mine. Okay, so can you, Giovanni, uh, let me uh, give you permission here to share. Okay, so, uh, all right, Giovanni, you now have permission to share. So can you go ahead and share your screen and show us what you got? Yep. And now we probably won't be able to hear his buzzer, but you'll be able to see it. So go ahead and start your simulation. Oh, you can, oh, good. We can hear it. Okay, five. So that's five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay, now it's doing something weird. I don't understand what it was doing there. Okay, but yeah, it started off really good. Okay, thanks, Giovanni. You can stop sharing now. Okay, so uh, if if you guys have got it, please tell me, please say got it. All right. you, Mr. Hendricks. Yes. So while the buzzer is beeping, uh, do we have to turn on the LVD while it's beeping as well? You don't have to. No. Okay. So, so yeah, it, let, uh, if you want to make a fancy version later, that would be nice. But for right now, I want to keep it simple so that we can finish everything up before the class period is over. Okay. So it's only the speaker. For right now. Yeah. All right. Um, could, I, could I see the code again, please? Okay. Here's my code. There you go. Now, this is not the only way that it could be done, but this is the way that I chose to do it. Now, um, I actually didn't finish my code because let me. So you see, I've got five, four, three, two, and now I, I haven't done the one. So I, I, I need to have it do one. So let me play the speaker on pin seven, uh, four point two five. Okay, my code is now done. So I've got the countdown taken care of. Wait, and you're supposed to wait one second be between each. Well, you have to oh. wait some amount of time. I'm not too fussy about how much it is. One, one second is, is okay, but you'll notice, you see what I did here? I only waited for a half a, a, half a second in, in between. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think, oh. I didn't put a weight in between them. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Okay, yeah, in between each one of these, I do need I do need some sort of wait time in between them. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so let's do a one second time. So let's do the same thing here. Okay, so I'm going to need a wait right here. Okay, and so then I do two times and I'm going to need a wait at the end of that. Okay, and then just for grins, let's put another wait at the end of that. Okay, all right, so I think mine is going to work now. So let's test mine and see if it beeps like it's supposed to. There's five beeps. There's four beeps. Three beeps, two beeps, one beep, and then it goes back up to five again. Aha! So you see we're running into the first of the limitations of the Arduino code, is that after it finishes the countdown, it goes back and it does the countdown again. That's not what we want it to do. We only want it to do the countdown one time. Do you guys, anybody know how to get around that problem? How can we make it so it does the countdown only one time? We, we could just put a repeat, but only one time around the entire thing. Tired block of code, correct? Kind of, would that work? Uh, but then it would only repeat one time. Uh, actually, once it finishes, it goes back and it, it starts at the very beginning again. So let me tell you the answer here. So if I click on code, and you see over on the left here where it says blocks. 
So I'm going to click on there and I'm going to show blocks plus text. So now it shows the real code. So over here on the right now, this is the real code. And I wonder if, uh, I wish there was a way I could expand that out. Doesn't look like there is. Okay. So in Arduino code, there's this thing called setup that we talked briefly about last time, but only briefly. Arduino code comes in two sections. There's the setup code where it's the stuff that you only have to do one time. And then there's the loop part of the code. And that's where it does the stuff over and over and over and over and over again. So when you create something using the drag and drop blocks, it automatically puts that code in the loop part of the code. So what we can do here is now that we have this code, we can cut it from here and we can paste it up into the setup part of the code. And so if we do that, then it will only, it will only run one time uh, and then it'll move on to the SOS part. But here's the trick, we gotta be careful. If I, if I go in to do that, so I have to go into the text to do it, and it, it's giving me a warning. It says that if we continue, then it will delete all of the blocks. And so then from this point on, we will have to program only in Arduino code. We won't be able to use the drag and drop stuff anymore. And I don't think we're quite ready for that. So how about let's do this. Let's cancel this. So let's leave this code in the loop part, which is not where we ultimately want it. But for right now, let's leave it there. And let's go back into the blocks and let's add some stuff onto the blocks here. Let's add in the SOS part of the code. Let's put the SOS part of the code down here. And then after we've got it, then we can go into the text and we can, we can tinker with the actual code. But so what I want you guys to do now is I want you to do SOS right here. So obviously we're gonna do a similar thing. We're gonna do a repeat. And so remember the letter S is dot, 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 okay? So we're gonna to wanna to repeat three times, but what is it that we wanna repeat? So in order light. to keep, th yeah, the light. So in order to keep things simple here, let's only do the light. Let's not do the buzzer, let's just do the light. Okay, so uh, how about Valerie? Can you walk me through what do I what do we need to do? How, what's the command to turn on the light? So Valerie, can you unmute yourself there? Okay, apparently not. All right, how about uh, KJ? Can you unmute yourself? And oh, here's Valerie. Okay, I'm I'm seeing Valerie now. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Valerie. So, what do I do to turn on the light? I'm not hearing you there, Valerie. All right. So, I think maybe we got a microphone problem there. KJ, can you uh, jump in? What do I do to turn on the light? Um, you need an output block. Okay. And then it's um, like set pin something to high, whatever pin your uh, light is on. Okay. Or if it's built in, then it's the built in to high. Very good. Very good. They'll both work. Okay. So in my case, it's on pin 13. All right. So I set pin 13 to high. Okay but I don't want it to stay on very long. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring in a wait statement, but one second is too long. So how about if we just make it be, I don't know, 0.2 seconds. Okay. All right. And so now KJ, so my light has been on for 0.2 seconds. Now I want to turn off the light. So how would I do that KJ? You turn it to low. Okay, but in so I have to go to output again, 
And then I have to say set pin whatever, which in this case is going to be 13 to low. Okay. And then I better put another weight in there. So let's go back to control and let's put in a weight. And let's have that weight be 0 0.2. All right. All right. So now we've got the S part. Uh, but we also need to have the O part. So I'm going to let you guys take it from here. So obviously we're going to put in another repeat and then we're going to repeat three times. But what are we going to do different this time? This time we're going to turn on the pin, but we need it to be on for longer than 0.2 seconds. So whatever you think is appropriate. Okay. So do you want, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Do you want a longer wait in between each um, yes. set? Good point. Very good point. We do need a longer wait in between them. Thank you for bringing that up. That is important. Because if we don't have that longer wait in between, then uh, the, one, the, the S and the O are going to bleed together. So we don't want that. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so I want you guys to work on it. So I want, so we've just programmed the S together. Now I want you to program an O, and then I want you to program another S. And when you're done, then I want you to tell me in the chat box that you're done. Uh, what's the Morse code for SOS again? Dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. So three short, three long, three short. Okay, thank you. All right, somebody just sent me a link here. I will uh, try it out. Let's see, I'm trying to make sure that when I turn it on, the beeping doesn't uh, interfere with what you guys are doing. So hang on. Now, I, I don't see a way to turn that off. So KJ is asking, will I type it out? Well, it's it's three three short, three long, three short. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. Yep. You got it. Okay. So let me try Keeler's and see how his works. Okay, very nice, Keeler. I like it. All right. Okay, so we got at least one student who's done. Anybody else got something you can share with us?
So when I tested Keeler's here, you guys didn't see it. So tell you what, let me uh, share my screen so you can see Keeler's thing here. Uh, okay, so this this here is Keeler's. Um, and so I think you probably heard the beeping when I tested it, but uh, so let's go. So watch out, I'm gonna start the beeper here. So this is Keeler's creation. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one. Okay, so now it goes into SOS. So that was three short, two, there's three long, and then one, two, three, really short. And now it goes back into the countdown part again, which is something we're gonna fix in just a minute there. Okay, so Keeler I'm, is done. How about the rest of you? I'm done. Wait, well, you're not completely done. We still have, we still need to do a little more. So, so you can sit back and, uh, and uh, take a short nap, but, uh, but don't go away. I think I did the, I put it in the setup already too. Uh, oh, okay. Cause the thing you sent me didn't, uh, didn't. Oh wait, happen. that's not, this is Adam, not. Um... Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So Adam, you want to share yours with us? Yeah. I see a lot of people are sending me the link. Uh, hang off on sending me the link. Uh, let's just let's just have you share your screen. Okay, so Adam is sharing his right now. And so he's activating it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One. Okay. Okay. All right, so now it's gone to SOS. So there was three short, there's three long, and now three short again. Good. Okay. And oh, oh, very nice. So you've got it so it repeats the SOS. Okay, good. So Adam has solved that problem that we talked about. Okay, so it looks like what Adam did was he, after he got all of the drag and drop stuff, he, he then took the countdown part and he moved it from the void loop up into the void setup. So way to go, Adam. Yes, you are way ahead of us. All right, so Valerie, I see your note saying that you're having a little bit of trouble. You wanna share your screen with us and let's see if working together, maybe we can all uh, find out where the problem is. All right, so um, tell you what, uh, let's click on start simulation. Let's just see if anything happens. Okay, so one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, two, three. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Oh, okay, now it's going in the SOS, okay. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so can you start the simulation one more time? I wanna see how many times does it beep when you start? Okay, so, all right, go ahead and start it. One long beep, and then nothing. Okay, yeah, something's definitely weird. Okay, go ahead and stop the simulation. And scro scroll up to the very top of your code there. All right, and boy, it's really small, so I need to get in close. Okay, so repeat five times. Play speaker on pin eight. with. Can you uh, open up your code a little bit more? If you come over to, the, yeah, right there, good. And then drag it over, yeah, oh, much better, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna play the speaker on pin eight for 0.25 seconds, wait for half a second, and then wait one. That looks good. So we do that five times, then we wait a second, then we do it four times. I don't see anything wrong with your code, Valerie, it looks good. Um, it's weird. Okay, keep scrolling down here. So I, I see three repeats, good. Then there's two repeats, good. Then there's one repeat, that looks good. Okay, I don't see anything wrong with your code. 
Can you scroll down some more and let me see your SOS part of your code? Keep, okay, so, all right. So we repeat three times, 13 high, wait. To, oh, okay, I see a problem. All right, so Valerie, after, at the very bottom there where it says set pin 13 to low, yeah, you need to put another wait statement in there. Yeah. Uh, not down there. You need to put it inside the the no no go down down and down right there yeah that's where you need it right there okay and then uh, change the one second to about 0 0.2 seconds on that okay good so that's your S and now do your O and your and your other S and I think you'll be fine okay you can stop sharing now uh, anybody else. Uh, all right, Silas, you think you have an error? Okay, we'll tell you what, guys. Um, before before I spend too much time working one on one with you to figure out your errors, I want to to finish up this project so that those of you that are done, you can sign off and you can you can leave the class. So let's let's have a couple of more of a couple more of you that think you're done. Uh, so uh, I see KJ. All right, sounds like Valerie is doing her testing there. That's good. Okay. All right. So uh, so Yosef, uh, you're saying that you're done. Can you share your screen? Let's see what you got. All right, Joseph, can you share your screen with us? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me share you. All right, Silas, I'm glad to see you. Think you got it now. That's good. All right, so here's Joseph's. Let's see what he's got. Go ahead and start the simulation. One, two, two. Okay, I'm not seeing the countdown. Now it could be just an internet problem. So Yosef, is it beeping properly for you? Okay, so I yeah. just saw it. Okay, so um, it's, it's hard for me to tell if it's beeping the right number of times because the way it's flashing, it could be just an internet problem. Okay, so it's doing the countdown. Okay, so there's the SOS. Wow, that SOS went by really fast. Okay, okay, so that was three short and three long. Okay, it's hard to tell because of the internet lag, but uh, uh, it it's not looking exactly like it should, but that might just be internet lag is the problem. Okay, so tell you what, guys. Uh, all right, Joseph, if you can stop sharing now, then... Uh, so, so everyone stop what you're doing for just a minute, please. And, and look up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you uh, what some of you have already done. Uh, so here's my code. And so I've got the drag and drop here so that it does. Okay, so there's the countdown and then there's the SOS. All right, so let's let's hide the code and let's verify that it works the way that it should. So let's see if it beeps right. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one. And now here comes there's that was the th that was the three short short. There's the three long. And now for the three short. Okay. Now, you see it goes back up into the countdown again, which we don't want, okay? But everything else is working good, all right? So now here's the thing that some of you have figured out, but those of you that haven't figured it out, watch really closely and you'll see how I do it. So I'm gonna click on code and I'm gonna go down to text. And it's gonna warn me, it's gonna say, hey, if you continue, you won't be able to go back to the blocks. Are you really sure you wanna do this? 
And so I'm going to say yes, I'm really sure. So I'm going to click on continue. OK, so I can't go back to the blocks now. Okay. But what I can do is this part of the code here where it says four counter equals zero to five. So this is where it does the five beeps. And then it delays for one second. And then this is where it does the four beeps. And then it delays for one second. And then so forth and so on. So all of this stuff with the beeps, what I'm going to do is I am going to cut and paste all of that in here. OK, so, so let's see. What have I got here? Um, where do I need to go down to? So right down to here. Okay, so I'm going to take from here all the way up to here. Now let me just make sure I got the right stuff there. Okay, that looks good. All right, so what I want to do is I want to move that out of the loop part of the code and into the setup part of the code. So I'm just going to do Control X to cut it out. And then I'm going to come up here into the setup part and I'm going to hit return. And now I'm going to do control V. And so what I've done is I've pasted all of that code into the setup. So now it's only going to do it one time. And then the SOS, that's what's going to go on forever and ever and ever. And now I do see there is a little problem with my code here. Because when it does SOS, there's no delay in between. So what I better do is I better put in another delay right here. So I'm going to say delay, comma, maybe for two seconds. So 2,000. Because Arduinos don't think in terms of seconds. Arduinos think in terms of milliseconds. OK, so hopefully this is going to work. Let's see if this works. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one. Now it does the SOS. There's the S. There, here comes the O. Okay, and now dot, dot, dot. Okay, and now it waits for two seconds. And now there again, dot, 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 dash, 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 dot. There, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. OK, so you see it's working properly now. So it has the countdown. So it does the countdown only one time. And then the, uh, the SOS, it repeats that forever and ever and ever. OK, so you see that the way I did that was I started off by using the, the drag and drop blocks to get the code almost what I wanted. But then in order to get that final tweak, I wasn't able to use the drag and drop. I had to go into the, into the real code, and I had to manipulate the real code. All right. So uh, what your assignment is for today is to create a, uh, uh, a circuit that does this. And then you need to share it with me on Canvas. Now, hopefully you guys remember that what, what you're going to be tempted to do is you're going to be tempted to take this URL from the top of the, uh, of the browser page and send me that. Hopefully you guys realize that doesn't work. If you do that, I will not be able to open up your code because I don't have permission. So you need to do it in a different way so that I have permission. So you see over here where it says share over here on the right. Let me move this thing out of the way here. OK, so over on the right here, it says share. So I click share. And then you'll see here I've got the, uh, it, the, the uh, option to invite people. So I click on that. OK, and so now, oops, why did it give me an error? That's weird. That doesn't, that's never happened before. Let's try that again. So let's click on share, invite people. It might be because the simulation is still on. Ah, OK, yeah, that could be. Thank you. Let's try that. Let's stop the simulation. Let's try that. No, nope, still didn't do it. OK, it could be because I'm sharing it over Zoom. That's it. So, so if you guys do that and then get the link that you get from there and then upload it to Canvas, then you will get credit for today's assignment. All right. Now, let me look and see if you have any questions again. OK, 
So, uh, all right. So Valerie is, is asking if you can, if I can share, show the code again. All right. So here's the code. And I wish I could zoom in. Yeah. Okay. Good. I can. All right. So here's the code. All right. So there's an awful lot of stuff there. Valerie, what part of the code do you want to see? So here's the setup part of the code. Is that the part you want to see, or do you want to see the loop part of the code? Right after the beeps, OK? All right. So all of this stuff that you see up here, this is all the beeps. So as soon as the beeps are done, then we go into the part that's called void loop. And that's where the SOS part of the code is, all right? So there you go. What you see right there, this is all the SOS part of the code. This is the part that's going to get repeated over and over and over again. All right, so if you guys have got this, if you've got a working circuit, then uh, please send it to me in Canvas. If you look on Canvas, you'll see there's an assignment all there We're waiting for it. So send me the link on Canvas, and then you are done. You can type by into the chat box, and you can go. And then the rest of you that are still having trouble, I'll stick around and I'll help you. And here I'm going to turn off the recording. There's no point in continuing that. <laughs>